All right, so I've got my Soundcraft, my router. Got an old phone with mixing station pulled up. And I am using the first generation of the Mackie Control Universal. Mixing station came with a bunch of stuff already kind of preset in it. Um, I came up with interesting things to do with all the other buttons and have labeled them. Um, first you'll see that it's layers of eight channels at a time. So I can bank over to the right. And we've got three layers for the 24 channels and then the line inputs, the USB player, the FX returns, um, the aux masters, uh, 9 and 10 as well, subgroups, matrixes if you have any, I have one. Uh, this layer is, I'm not sure what that layer was. Um, and then we've got the main left and right, and then the DCAs, and then it cycles back to the first channels. Um, so it initially comes with pan working for the V-Pots, um, and gate and compression uh, also show up on here. So uh, gain also works. So gain, pan, uh, gate, there's a few things you can adjust up there and that's just for the selected channel right now it's the base channel one is selected uh, compression um, I figured out a way to do uh, these sends from the selected channel point so that's aux one level aux two level so on and so forth um, and so when you turn that up here you you see the, the number that corresponds to the V-Pot as well as the lights on the encoder. Um, so I'm going to turn off that or I'm going to turn it off and go back to gain. Um, but I figured out a way to use EQ. So the selected channel, I hit EQ and what we have is our four band parametric EQ. So this is the first band, second band, third band, and fourth. And these are the controls for them. The first band is the frequency here can be adjusted and the Q. Frequency and Q. This is for the third band, this is for the fourth band. Um, so essentially gain up uh, I guess I can show you what that looks like on here too. So as I gain up and down that third band and if you want to see the Q and the frequency. So that's how that works. Um, let's see what else have I done. Oh, high pass, low pass filter the selected channel so this is the low pass uh, the high pass filter um, and this is the low pass for the selected channel um, so these are all changing what the v-pots do essentially um, this controls what the seven digit uh, numbers up here do so it's normally for counting the beats in your session, but we don't have beats when we're doing live music, so um, I have it alternating between clock time from the UI24 or song title. Um, obviously it's not going to be able to fit a whole song title, so you've got to pick and choose how you'd want that to be displayed. Uh, you can get creative with file names and stuff like that. Um, while we're up at the display level, this two-digit assign assignment um, is what it's called. That is 
representing what mix you're on. So that appears to be NA, it's actually MA for master, main, main mix. Um, <clears throat> as I let me, uh, come back to turn off the EQ, come back to channel one through eight, there we go. Um, so we're back to the main mix here. Uh, so this section over here is sends on faders. Uh, for all eight auxes. Um, so if I hit aux one, you'll see that that assignment is A1 up there. Um, and then it uh, sends on faders for all the channels that we have here. Um, so we could do the aux two mix. Aux 3 mix, Aux 4, Aux 4 and 5 are linked so they don't change. Um, let's see, so that's the sends on faders, if I click it again it goes back to the main mix, so sends on faders, sends off. Um, let's see, um, so it sends on faders again for the effects sends. It uh, doesn't show up anything on the assignment section over there so I'll turn it back off. We'll get back to the main mix. And then uh, subgroups. I'm only using four of the subgroups. Uh, and nothing on those levels that you would see apparently. Unless I'm mixing something. No, I'm going to turn them down. Subgroup one is supposed to be guitars. Subgroup Two was vocals, and subgroup three was uh, all the drums. So kick, kick, snare, snare, tom, tom. One more tom. All right. So let's turn off the subgroups there. So we're back to the regular channels. Um, okay, so that sends on faders section right there. And this is to navigate the actual levels. I have been doing banking back and forth, but to get to layers that are further down, it's a lot quicker to just pick the one you want. So channels one through eight, nine through 16, 17 through 24 and then we have the line in USB player and FX returns There we go um, And then the aux 1 through 8 masters um, Aux 9 and 10 as well a different layer subgroups all of the subgroups so it's the master of the subgroups um, matrixes 1 through 8 I only have one matrix matrix 9 and 10 if you have one set up I don't and then the main DCA layer is uh, two main channels and then six DCAs um, let's see Okay, so let's get back to the regular mix here. Um, one thing that I noticed was that there was no way to arm tracks for multi-track recording, um, at least within mixing station. Um, so we weren't using the record buttons here, which have little lights on them. So those could be in, come in handy. So I'm using it for two different functions. Um, it's to use the uh, phantom power per channel and um, phase reverse. So let me see phantom power. I set this for um, only when you long press it. So hold it down, turns off phantom power for channel eight. 
turn it back on so that's phantom um, and the way that we switch it we use the flip button down here lit equals phase so when that is on we're not seeing phantom power on this row now we're seeing phase so if we go over to oops I just cranked up the master so if we bank over we see that the snare under is phased um, and we'll bank over one more and we'll see that I have phantom turned on for the three overhead mics so that came in handy okay what do we have left still um, we've gone through all of those Okay, so these four buttons here are the 31 band EQ, GEQ, um, for all of the main outputs. So if we go over to, let's, let's go over to the box levels, oh actually sorry, box 1 through 8 level. Um, So we have, let's go with aux1, okay so we have aux1 selected, now <clears throat> instead of using, so this EQ button up here for the channels um, is for the parametric EQ which has four bands, um, the 31 GEQ is down here. But, I was having an issue with overriding the sends on faders stuff, so I set this up as momentary. It's four layers to represent the different ranges. So, uh, aux1 selected, we're going to hit tw uh, the lowest group, 20 through 100 hertz. So that's all right there. I actually wrote those down here too. So it's four different layers. 20 through 100 for the first layer, uh, 125 through 500 for the second layer, 800 through 4K, and then 5K up to 20K. Uh, I don't have enough hands to actually make those changes and show on here, but it works. Um, and then the last handful of buttons here, we have mute groups. I just used five. Um, the tap tempo was another thing that I had to locate and map out. It works. It's great. And then uh, if anything is soloed, so we have, uh, let's get out of the, go back to the main mix here. Um, so say I have the bass and the guitar is soloed. Uh, now we have this light comes on for the clear solo button. So we can just press clear solo and it gets rid of them. The last things that I did were uh, the rewind and fast forward buttons. Those are to navigate the songs. So I have really long click tracks playing that uh, have the BPM in them. So I just leave them playing and I can navigate through the different songs. I'll still have to... Uh, this is uh, using the um, two-track player, uh, USB player um, in the Soundcraft. So I can navigate through songs with my rewind and fast forward buttons um, and right now the stop, play, and record buttons are only mapped out to uh, function as the multi-track songs. I want to be able to tell that I hit the multi-track record button after we've started playing. I can do that just like that. So yeah, 
I think that pretty much covers everything. Oh, the uh, connection is um, so mixing station on my old Galaxy S21. I'm using a dongle uh, that the phone carrier uh, gave me when I was swapping phones. It's USB-C to uh, whatever regular USB is that you plug into a computer. Um, and this dongle is a USB MIDI uh, interface, really. Um, the control surface works by using uh, old school DIN cables, uh, in and out MIDI cables. So the only cables that I'm using right now are a power cord for the DAW controller and the uh, MIDI to USB interface along with the dongle with this. I also do have the phone just kind of sitting on a wireless charger so I'm not using that port and I'm not losing power. Um, yeah. Oh, I do like having the clock on here. It is 5.19 in the morning. Oh yeah, um, I do have a replacement jog wheel coming in the mail, and uh, the arrow buttons are to go back and forth between different channels. So when you have, you know, a device up, you can quickly see all the different stats on it as you navigate through. I think that covers everything. Thanks.